time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stopette, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And it's delightful to have with us again tonight one of the great personalities of show business, Mr. Fred Allen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. And on my left, ladies and gentlemen, a charming young lady who some years ago married another fellow <laughs> because the answer man wouldn't pop the question, <laughs> Miss Arlene Francis. And lucky it was. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> and on my left, a gentleman whose sparkling surfboard column is a weekly feature in This Week, a Sunday feature in This Week magazine. <laughs> And very lucky that is for this week, too, Mr. Bennett Surf. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, in, in the corner on my left, wearing purple trunks, <laughs> weighing 139, <laughs> our moderating champion, the Johannesburg Bearcat, John <laughs> Kidd Daly. <laughs> Direction, the trunks is blue. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, uh, we're going to do the uh, panel, if we can, no good. We've got some nice folks with some very interesting occupations, and I think we're going to have the uh, panel members spinning like tops before we're finished. We hope so. We also have a guest challenger. He'll be with us in a little while, but right now I think it's time for these experts of ours to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. Would you sign in, please, sir? O.E. <laughs> O.E. Tips. Is that right? <laughs> we had a man once got away with a piece of chalk. <laughs> no, I'll try not to. You nearly fired me. You ain't going to get that one. <laughs> well, Mr. Tibbs, O.E., what does the E stand for? Edwin. Edwin Tibbs? Yes. Where are you from, sir? Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland. That's well, good. It's nice to have you with us. Would you mind taking a short hike with me over here? Uh... Tell you what, the panel actually has had a chance to look at your handwriting, had a chance to look at you, and heard your voice. We give them one free guess on the basis of this brief, somewhat sketchy acquaintance. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Well, he's so rugged looking, I'm sure he does needlepoint. Needlepoint, <laughs> Mr. Allen. I think that Mr. Tibbs is a truant officer with the Ding Dong School. <laughs> Miss Bradford. I think Mr. Tibbs makes Halloween masks. Mr. Sir. I think Mr. Tibbs is a librarian at the Enoch Pratt Library down Baltimore. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Tibbs, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> the panel's got to go to work on this, Mr. Tibbs. You know how we score this thing? You give them a no answer, I flip a card, ten flips, and you've given it to them. Yes, sir. You all set? Sir? All right, Mr. Tibbs is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mr. Tibbs? Yes. Good for you. <laughs> is there... Uh, you are a big man, and look like a strong man. Are you in any way associated in the world of sports? No. That's one down and nine to go, mm -hmm. Mr. Sir. Mr. Tibbs, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is this a product that is uh, in general use in the country today? Yes. Yes, is in it... a manner of speaking, it's in general use. Only in a manner of speaking? Yes, I would like to put some qualifying factor in. I think Mr. Tibbs would agree to it. Well, considering the limited use to which it is put, Mr. Tibbs, is that use by both sexes, men and women? No. One small conference, if I may. <laughs> Quite a big conference, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Tibbs is a very generous man. Uh, <laughs> we both feel that uh, it's very probable that in this general product area, it, a member of um, 
both sexes has at one time or another been uh, in evidence, so we'll give you a yes answer. But I take it from this qualified answer, Mr. Tibbs, that one sex is much more likely to come into contact with this product than the other. Is that correct? Yes. Would that be the male sex? Yes. 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would the uh, male sex come into contact with this product in a bodily manner? Yes. It would touch a certain part of the male anatomy. Is that correct? <laughs> would this uh, certain part of the male anatomy be above the belt? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Could it also be below the belt, too? Yes. Uh, would it be in evidence, Mr. Tibbs, if uh, you were using this product and strolled into this theater? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would think so. And if you were to use this product and stroll in this theater, it certainly would be yes. in evidence. <laughs> yes. uh, I take it, then, it is not generally used in every day for everyday apparel. Is that correct? Used for everyday apparel? Yeah, it would not be used in the uh, ordinary course of events. If you were dressing to go to business, you wouldn't be likely to use this product. Is that correct? That's correct. It is used then for some special purpose? Yes. Would this purpose be connected in any way with a special event in a person's life? With a special event in a person's life. Such as a marriage, a birth of a child, going to jail. <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> Why? No, I don't think we give him a no on that. No, don't you think I, so, Mr. Tim? Think think Two down at eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, now, you've said that women sometimes use this product. It is recorded that a woman has used a product in this general area, yes. Are you trying to imply a certain incongruity? Not necessarily incongruity, no. Well, is this something actually other than apparel? Yes. Then the man who uses it would not be wearing it, unless he were odd in no, some he, manner. he would not. <laughs> yes, the man would not be wearing it. But he would touch it, or it would come in contact with him. Yes. Uh, you have said you're not connected with sports. Is the product unconnected with sports, too? Yes, it is unconnected with sports. But sporty fellows do you? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> is it necessary for someone else to be using or wielding this product for it to come in contact with the fellow who comes in bodily contact with it? Oh, was that again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the answer to that is no. I'm not quite sure. No, I would well, think... I, <laughs> I think the Jensen. Siamese twins could do it, I think. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, John. I yes, mean, I know uh, what you do. I think, Dorothy, you it's, uh, your question has certain valid points to it, but I believe the invalid area is somewhat larger than the valid area, so we'll give you a no. <laughs> Read out and seven to go, Mr. Allen, and I don't think you're even getting close. I'm going to give you one minute more to see if you can get it. Well, is this, has it been established what... Uh, is this a product, a liquid... Is this product a liquid? Is it a liquid? No. no. That makes it four down and six I to go. I took a long time to say that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Is this product alive? Alive? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Tibbs, has this product got anything to do with any branch of the law? The law? Would it be used by any member of the law? Uh, enforcing, a law enforcing agency? No. Not in current practice. Six clear. down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it bigger than a steamer trunk? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. You always wear those above your waist. <laughs> <laughs> Is it ever found out of doors? Pardon? Is it ever found out of doors? Uh, yes. Is it useful rather than decorative? Yes, it's useful. Would you ever go into it? Yes. Uh, oh. Well, is it a vehicle of any kind? Yes. Does it have wheels? Yes. Uh, is it used for transportation? Well, I guess it would be if it were a vehicle. Is it? <laughs> is it Does... used for public transportation? Is it used for public transportation? Yes. No, I don't believe we could well, call this on, public boy, transportation. Seven down and three to go. Is, this, uh, is this 
Does Mr. Tibbs have something to do with the making or the selling of trailers? No. But they don't, and I'm going to flip the well, thing they have if I don't wheels think on you've them. got it. Beg pardon, Fred? They have wheels on them. Yes, they do. That's oh, very <laughs> I saw one once that didn't, but most of them I understand do. <laughs> now, actually, this is going to be a big surprise to you. Mr. Tibbs is the chief test pilot of Martin Bombers. Jet Bombers. Oh. Well, if well. you never see him on the ground, John, I don't know how we could recognize him. <laughs> well, Mr. Tibbs has just said he would like to donate his prize to the Baltimore Community Chest. Uh, I think that's a nice thing, an awfully nice thing to do. And I, I would only add, because this is the season that when the Community Chest Drive begins in your town, pledge enough to cover all the services in your community, give generously, give the United way because it's the best way. And Mr. Tibbs, thanks very much. I hope you had fun. It was nice to have you with us and watch my life. Well, that was a real tough one, panel. Now let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you please come in and sign in, please, ma'am? E.K. E.K. <laughs> ah, I get it. E.K. Greenberger, is that right? How are you? Are you nervous? No. You mean you go around smashing up chalk like that all the time? <laughs> what does the E stand for? Eva. Eva Greenberger, and where are you from? New York City. New York City? Yes. Will you come on over here, please, and uh, make yourself comfortable? And uh, we will give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. We begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's an interior decorator. Interior decorator, Mr. Allen. I think Miss Greenberger is a, a registered nurse on Medic, that new TV show. Miss <laughs> Fred. I think uh, Mrs. Greenberger is an executive in some political way. Mr. Sir. Oh, I think Miss Greenberger is an executive in a big department store. I'm afraid uh, some interesting answers, but not the right one. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Greenberger. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is. <laughs> and then we'll see what the panel can do. You know how we score this, Miss... Yeah. Is it Mrs. Greenberger, is it? Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Greenberger. All right, you all set? Mrs. Greenberger is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Would you deal in services? Yes. Mr. Greenberger? Well, do you have any connection with politics? No. Politics, no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, you don't work for the government, then? No. You don't work for a... Uh, well, of course, the government, you couldn't say the government is a prof uh, profitable organization. It with better a three, be. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant with a $300 billion uh, deficit, it, it wouldn't be a profit <laughs> uh, organization. It's, it's a, a private uh, industry that yes. you work. Uh, do you... Uh, uh, your services uh, are confined to any particular building? Yes. They are. Mm -hmm. Are they, uh, do you have certain hours in that building that you have to? Yes. Do you, uh, uh, your services uh, deal with men and with women? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Now, you say that you're self-employed. Do you need special training for your job? Not in the terms of reference which we understand. I'm not I talking about that. formal training, John. Yes, I know you're not. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Greenberg, is there a product involved at all yes. in what you do? And you say you do not work with both sexes. No. And Arlene skipped that, so now I have to guess which sex it is, don't I? That's right. Uh, well, I'll take a guess that this time it's with ladies rather than with no. men. Nice guess and no. That's <laughs> four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you come in uh, physical contact with the people that you deal with? Yes. Do you ever have to do anything like uh, measure them or fit them or uh, put anything on them or take anything off them? Yes. Uh, do you deal in any way with any type of apparel? Yes. Is this in a shop or store? Yes. And is it a store for men? Yes. Then I just have to find out what you do in a store Actually, for men. Dorothy, you're very close to it, but it's a special kind of men's store. See if you can figure it out. 
Fat men? Fat men is right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Mrs. Gr Greenberger runs a fat men's store. <laughs> runs it? I've known her for oh, years. <laughs> owns it. Owns it and runs it. It's all hers. Right Where in is New it? New York. In New York City. Right that must require Third a great deal M. of tact. Does it require a great deal of tact? And a great deal of tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, Mrs. That's Greenberger's tape. always made me feel very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have won not a very big prize, but well, I hope you had fun. Well, thank you very well, much. She's living thank on the fat of the land anyway. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel always are masked. Are your masks all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go right to the general questioning, which we will begin with um, Mr. Fred Allen. Well, I think, John, uh, as a result of the great ovation and the uh, subdued squealing here, that our uh, guest is uh, in the entertainment field. Ooh, um, uh, yeah. You are in the entertainment field? Uh, yep. With that uh, voice, you are not a singer, I assume. <laughs> you are, and I know you can't uh, make a living hog calling in the entertainment. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I sing a, a little bit there. Yeah. But I, I would say, Mr. Allen, that you are right to the degree that though our guest does sing, he is not a singer per se. Per se. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we took the words out of each other's mouths, John. <laughs> not very sanitary, I might say. <laughs> Mystery guest, uh, are, are you better known in the uh, uh, motion picture field than you are in the theater? Well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you appeared on uh, television to any degree? Yeah, yeah. You have been on, on television? Yeah, yeah. You are a man, I assume. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> you're not down on all fours, I mean, I... Now I know how the Lone Ranger feels. If I... But uh, tell me, uh, you, have you ever had a television show of your own? Uh, nope. One down, nine to go, Miss Fred. Then are you primarily known as a motion picture performer? Y yeah. And uh, would you be considered the leading man? Mm, yeah. You get the girl? From the reaction of the audience, I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Have you been in pictures uh, for more than five years? What? Dubious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but uh, the, that's about it, is it? About five years? You, uh... Are you an American motion picture star? A silent star, I guess. <laughs> Would you like to ask that question over, Miss Francis? I'm looking for emphasis factors. Oh. Well, sure, then, let me say, perhaps you are an American picture star, but have you ever appeared in any other country in pictures? Uh, yeah. yeah. You have? Uh -huh. Would you uh, ask that question again? <laughs> I'm looking for emphasis. Am I wrong? Now, I mean, actually, it's, I tell you, let's go on. Oh, I, I see what your emphasis is. He's not an American, actually. He is a motion picture star here in America. Now, let me get something cleared up. I didn't tip anybody, but I couldn't answer the question until I got this straightened out. Actually, that is right. The point we were trying to make clear, our friend is a star in America, mm -hmm. but not necessarily an American picture star. I see. So proceed from there. Uh, well... Uh, you don't sound English, though I, uh, from the uh, hog calling, as Mr. Allen says, we'd have no way of knowing, really. But do you come from uh, any part of the European continent? Uh, no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I don't think Arlene should have ruled out England. And, 
I'm going to venture the guess that possibly you do come from England. That's very, very wise of you, Bennett. That no, will make it wrong. three down and seven to go, <laughs> Miss Gilgallan. Uh, do you perhaps come from the place that we like to refer to as South America? Well, uh, yep. Oh, Arlene. Oh, I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> Did you ever before? Did you ever appear in a picture <laughs> um, where you rode a horse? <laughs> I have other pictures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you ever appear in a picture in which you waltzed <laughs> prominently? Yep. Are you married to a beautiful redhead? Yep. A doll, Are you, you might say. Fernando <laughs> Lamas. Fernando right. Lamas. Wonderful news. Mrs. Lamas is here. Would you call her okay. out? Let's say hello to her. That'd be great. Wonderful. Can we put the masks on again? <laughs> oh, <you're right. laughs> oh, a wonderful surprise. Wonderful surprise to have both of them here. Now, let's see. We've got just enough time to give the panel a run for its money. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Oh, boy, are we going to have conferences on this one? No. <laughs> please, Bennett. Eileen. I Neil. Eileen Donnellan. Is that right? Oh, no, are you, ma'am? <laughs> Is it Miss or Miss? It's Miss Donnellan. And I tell you what, you come over here and sit down next to me, and we will dispense with the wild guests in your cases, I think. What we will do is just let our viewers at home get a chance to know who you are. We'll tell them, but we'll make the panel do nothing but work hard. Are you all right? Is that all right with you? All right, now let's let the viewers at home know what your occupation is, but the panel's going to have to work. All right, now, uh, Mr. Nellen, you know how we score this thing. Good. Mr. Nellen is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Sir. Well, Mr. Nellen, if I may be personal, is it the fact that you're a very beautiful and magnificently proportioned young lady got anything to do with the work that you did? No. <laughs> <laughs> One dollar and nine to go. But you got in your inning anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you promised me a chance for a conference. All right, Mr. Nellen. But it's fun looking like that, isn't it, Mr. Nellen? <laughs> <laughs> Guess so. Uh, do you work indoors? Mm, no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Do you work out or doors? Yes. I was going to uh, suggest that you were a Mambo consultant at Arthur Murray's at first, but I didn't have that <laughs> opportunity. Do you, uh, is the work that you do, is it seasonal at all? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is there, is it a service that you do? Yes. Uh, do you wear uh, any kind of a uh, costume or cover-up uh, uh, over the, your dress? <laughs> I mean to say, do you wear a coverall, something to protect your clothes, or do you wear any kind of a costume when you appear out of doors? Yes. Uh, yeah, I thought I was going to get a conference then. Go ahead, Miss Arlene. Do you ever appear near water? No. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I'm sorry, I, I think. take it and presume that you mean large waters, and we'll get a no. Oh, I just met a cup of water, John. No, you don't. <laughs> Four down and six oh, to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Nellen, does the costume that you wear for your work cover more of your very agreeable territory than the dress you're wearing now? No. No? Small conference. conference. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. All right, we'll make it yes and no. We've got about 30 seconds. Now. Yes and no? Yes uh, and no. She yeah. changes. <laughs> Do you have anything to do with transportation of any sort, Mr. Nell? Yes. Are you uh, possibly somebody who takes tickets or punches fares or something like that somewhere or other? No. Isn't he wonderful? No. That's right. We've <laughs> run out of time, so we'll flip all the cards over and sit hard, panel, because Mr. Nellen is a gas station attendant. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> all right. <we're clears throat> I see a glint in Fred Allen's eye. Where do you do this? 
I do this at the Shell Gasoline Station, Gasoline Alley at Hillside and Metropolitan Avenue? Good. We'll all be there in the morning, and thank you for <laughs> being our guest. It was lovely having you with us and watching you. Good night. Now, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Fred. Come back soon. Thank you. Good night, Eileen. Good night. Come back next week. Thank good you. night, Bennett, dear. <laughs> uh, Got to get some gas. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> get in line. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? In association with the CBS Television Network.